Hi, this is Alex Helmbrecht, the Sports Information Director at Shattern State College, and I'm sitting here this morning with Shattern State Head Men's Basketball Coach Brent Bargan. Uh, the Eagles played in, in what is arguably one of the toughest road trips in uh, Division II, uh, probably uh, basketball in, in America, and, and especially in the NCAA, uh, with two long trips to New Mexico Highlands uh, and western New Mexico. The reason that it makes it kind of a hard trip uh, is the Eagles play at New Mexico Highlands on a Friday evening, uh, they played a double overtime game. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Uh, and then that's followed by a six six and a half hour trip to Silver City, New Mexico to play Western New Mexico. Uh, so definitely a, a, a tough trip. But coach, I know you get you guys got two losses, but they're two tight games, uh, one including the double overtime setback at New Mexico Highlands and, and listening to you on the radio uh, following the game, you you were you, you're a little bit more optimistic than you have been in weeks past. You, you feel like your team kind of grew a little bit. Well, it was obviously a difficult trip. You know, you lose the first one in double overtime and we shot 35 free throws in the first one, and honestly, I think we could have shot 50, and I thought we did a good job. We had a hard time closing that game out. We had an opportunity to do so, uh, and I was a little disappointed in how the game played out uh, in regulation, but uh, kids battled and did a great job, and, and I was really proud of their efforts. Got guys coming back and doing some good things. Uh, we didn't take Grant with us because he had sprained his ankle and missed his third game in a row, and that hurts us. He's our second leading scorer. And then Kendrick uh, kind of got banged up and got in some foul trouble and ended up fouling out early. And so, you know, our depth went from okay to virtually nothing. And I thought those kids really battled and competed. We had five or six kids that played the bulk of the last 20 minutes uh, straight, uh, being that the two overtimes in the last 10 minutes of regulation. And that doesn't happen very often. You hope that that's not the case. And I thought our kids did a great job. We had some guys with some tremendous performances. I thought, uh, you know, Zach played well. I thought uh, led us in scoring, and uh, uh, Kyle Vinich had his best game of the year at 19 and 11, and eight offensive rebounds, and brought great energy, and is really starting to come on. And I thought David Downey played really well. Chris uh, Taylor played well. We had just a lot of guys play well in that game, and I just wish that we would have been able to get a win. Have a double overtime game, and we get on the bus and drive six hours. Uh, we got to the hotel at 5:30 in the morning on Saturday, just in time for them to eat breakfast. The guy was. Uh, uh, putting out breakfast for us or putting out breakfast for the day and we were able to eat and then go back to bed. Uh, it's a difficult game on that game. Uh, Highlands is a, a talented group. They're not playing real well together, I wouldn't say right now, but they're a very talented group and, and a pretty deep group. And um, you know, It was disappointing for a loss, but I was really proud of our kids of how they battled and competed over a difficult trip. As Coach mentioned, Zach Bargan finished with a game-high 33 points. Uh, he also had seven rebounds and, and two assists. Uh, Kyle Vinich had his first career double-double, career highs in rebounds and points and finishing with 19 and 11. And then David Downey, uh, who had a really good week uh, rebounding the ball for the Eagles, finishing with seven in both games, uh, and he added 15 points at Highlands. Uh, the, the Eagles, uh, though, had a hard time matching Highlands in the overtime period on the free throw line. The Cowboys finished seven of eight from the line. Uh, Shattern State just got there four times, uh, hitting three of them. So that was really where the difference was made up. Uh, Highlands was led by Augustus French, uh, finished with 16 points, 10 rebounds, and 12 block shots. Uh, the 12 block shots is, is a new RMAC record. And that was followed by a 75 to 65 sh uh, setback at. Uh, Western New Mexico, uh, really a, 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 a tightly played game. Both games this weekend, Coach, were, were uh, to an outsider, uh, not, not a Shatter State fan, really interesting and entertaining games for uh, basketball fans to watch. Uh, the Eagles actually led 35-34 to in the first half. But Western New Mexico came out firing in the second half and, and really pushed the pace, getting to the foul line 15 times. Well, the same thing again. You know, we – we're ahead and playing pretty well, and Kendrick goes to the hospital with a shoulder injury, and uh, you know that took away a lot of depth. And like I said, we had we had guys play uh, 45 minutes of the 50 minutes the night before, and then travel six hours and get in at five in the morning, 5:30 in the morning, and turn around and play a good a good opponent uh, on the road again. And that was kind of. You know, it was a very physical game. You know, not a lot of fouls called. We're averaging over 30 free throws a game, and we shot 17, as did Western New Mexico, and it was a very physical game. They let the game get away, let the game get uh, going back and forth, and uh, and didn't call many fouls. And uh, yeah, that's something we're not used to in the sense that usually the fouls that we would be 
creating would be called and we would be getting to the line. And, um, you know, that was a big change for us. But uh, I thought our kids played hard and competed. And, again, like I said, we play without uh, two of our perimeter players, two of our top three or top four scorers. And um, I thought we really battled and competed. We just ran out of gas, quite frankly. It was pretty much a five-point game throughout the entire game. And then uh, they kind of stretched it out at the end. We missed a couple of shots, and they made a couple of baskets down the stretch. When we fouled, they made free throws. And, uh, um you know, it was kind of disheartening, but I was really proud of the kids. Again, uh, we've been asking David Downey to do other things other than just score. He puts a lot of pressure on himself where if he's just shooting the ball, that's what he has to do. And if he doesn't shoot the ball well, he didn't bring anything to the table early in the year. And now he's really starting to guard, and he had seven rebounds in both games, and I thought played really, really well. Kyle Vinich is coming on a lot, uh, playing his best basketball. Now he's settled into a new position and settled in after football got over. And I know that seems kind of silly, but it takes a while for you to switch sports and switch gears and he's really starting to come on and if we can get Kendrick back and being healthy and we can get Grant back and being healthy which we hope that they should both be back this weekend we'll be a little bit closer to full strength and and uh, hopefully be able to continue to move forward but I was proud of our kids I thought uh, Dominic Watkins uh, and, and Brandon Pippinger our two freshmen played well especially in the uh, Highland and the uh, Western New Mexico game I thought they really competed and, and contributed and did some nice things Brandon had five rebounds three of them offensive went two or three from the floor and um, you know Dom I thought did some good things too he was four or seven from the floor was much more aggressive with the basketball had three steals two assists so they're starting to fill in and, and help fill the gaps and you know I've, I'm really optimistic about this group they've been growing they've been working hard and they've been in, improving where we were kind of in a lull there in the first semester we're starting to make strides to improve and we've got good young kids in the program we don't have a senior on the roster and I think eventually they, you know we're going to have a very good team I don't know how many games we'll continue to win or get to be able to win and what will get done the rest of the year but I know that this team is going to be a very good team in the future well the Eagles will be back in action this weekend uh, playing a pair of home games against Colorado State University Pueblo and the University of Colorado Colorado Springs uh, Pueblo will come into town on Friday that'll be an 8 p.m. tip off for the men's game uh, followed by UCCS on Saturday uh, coach just real fast looking at Pueblo currently 6 and 11 on the season Five and six in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, which kind of puts them in the middle uh, of things. They've, they've won four of their last six games uh, and really a pretty balanced team uh, with five players averaging nine points and above. Yeah, and they've got, you know, of the games played so far, they've had the majority of those games at home, and uh, that always helps. And um, over half their games have been at home, and, and that's, that's always a good thing for you. Um, They've got two kids in double figures, one at 12 and one at 11, and then they got three or four guys right at nine. So uh, the, uh, as you know, any time that you've got balanced scoring, you're a little tougher to, to defend. Um, you know, who do you stop and where do you stop and other guys can score, and that's where we want to be is a balanced offensive scoring attack, and that's something that Pueblo is doing a good job of right now, um, scoring 74 points a game, giving up 76 points a game. And then that's followed by a game against the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs on Saturday. Uh, the Mountain Lions are kind of struggling this year, 2-13 and 13 overall, 2-9 and nine in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Uh, and, and pretty similar to Pueblo in the regard that they have balanced scoring, uh, four players averaging eight and above, but theirs is a little bit more top-heavy than Pueblo. Uh, Derek White is among one of the conference leaders in scoring. He's, he's right under 17 points a game uh, and also shoots well, 42% from the field, uh, 34% from three-point range, and then 82% from the line. So stopping him will probably be a priority. Well, you know, the They've had a tough time, similar to us, of scoring the basketball a little bit and haven't been real consistent offensively. But those three kids are at 17, 11, and 10, and that's a pretty good scoring punch. And, uh, you know, we just got to be able to make sure that we can curtail those top guys and, and not give up uh, any baskets to some of the supporting cast. That's been a kind of a bugaboo for us a little bit. Um, We've done a decent job of guarding some of the team's best players, but um, we haven't done a great job of guarding some of the supporting cast. Like we talked about about Black Hills, they've had two kids come in that were averaging 10 and 7, and they had 30 points combined. And, uh, you know, that's just something that can't happen. We've got to have a, be a good all-around 
defensive team and be able to defend more than just the guys that are kind of putting up numbers. And hopefully we can uh, – uh, we had a good day of practice yesterday on Tuesday, and hopefully we'll, that will continue in, in the week's preparation, and hopefully we'll carry over last week's efforts to, to, the, to home games. Love our home crowd, and uh, we should have good crowds this weekend, and uh, hopefully those uh, home crowds and, and the continued effort and improvement will lead to a couple of wins at home. All right, Coach, well, best of luck to you this weekend. Uh, both games are Friday at 8 p.m. Thank you. Thanks.